When it comes to memory keeping, sometimes simple is the best. Hey guys, May Flom here, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made a custom album cover for a photo album. So this isn't even a scrapbook, this is just a photo album, which will be really nice. Now the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your album, you're gonna size it, you're gonna think about how big or small do you want your design, and think about the elements that you might want. You're also going to gather your materials. For this project, you're going to want to use craft vinyl or sticker vinyl, whatever you might call it, but the kind of vinyl that is essentially a sticker. And you're going to need an album cover that will take the sticker vinyl. Now, just a tip, if you have a fabric album, you can use heat transfer vinyl and an iron and do a project just like that. So there's a substitution suggestion. Now, the first thing I do on a project like this is, and I'm just showing you an, a bit of inside of my process here, I do some sketches and I think about words or numbers or information that I might want on my project. I think about size, I think about scale, I consider my project, and I also consider built-in designs. Now, you can do a lot in Canvas Workspace on your computer, or you can just do this all on your machine. Now, the first step here, I actually printed out the font I wanted. Just a tip, there is also a tool free for the scan and cut that you can utilize to do that way as well. But I wanted to show you how I scan it. So we're gonna go ahead, go in here and scan, scan to cut data because we are scanning this and we are going to want to save this and then cut it out of something else. I always remember that by Scan to cut data means I don't, I'm not trying to cut the paper that I'm scanning, I'm just trying to make a cut file, whereas direct would mean that you're wanting to cut out what you put in. Anyhow, there are different adjustments you can make if needed. You can bring, if you need to ignore object size, if there's little spots showing up. But for me, I'm going inside and outside the lines and it's absolutely perfect, so I'm going to save it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my machine and you could also save it to a USB if you prefer. And that's really it. It is that simple to create your own cut file with something you scan in into your scan and cut. Our next step, of course, will be to go in and get it, but we're also gonna go in and get a pattern because I came across a really pretty design here in my machine that I thought, you know what? This would be an absolutely beautiful background. I want this to be a part. Now, just a tip here. I'm going to be bringing in all of my elements and if I do so at full size, it's going to be very crowded at first, and I don't want that. So I'm going to actually make this quite small to bring it in, and I'll show you why, because as we do this, what I'm going to be able to do is bring everything else in and do the edits that need to happen and everything, and it's going to be just a lot easier on me. Okay, so now we need to do a bit of editing because we've got our saved file, our Smith family photos, as it says. However, the cut files can't be moved because as you can see, every little red dot is in fact a separate cut. So what you need to do is select the pieces you want to keep together, in this case, just the word Smith, and unify them. What this will do is treat the word Smith instead of as, I don't know, seven or 10, it'll treat it as one. And then I'm going to repeat this process on each additional word. This way I can move things around and play with them without worrying that I'm moving, say, the inside of the letter P. Certainly wouldn't wanna do that. So we're just going to repeat that until done. Then the third and final cut file I want for this is the numbers 2021. So I'm going in and picking a font just a note, you could do this with any of your computer fonts. There is that free text convert, so it converts from a font into a scan and cut cut file that you could use. If you have a font on your computer, you could print and scan as I did with my words. You have lots and lots of options. But now I've got all of my pieces, so I am going to go ahead and enlarge my intricate floral background design to about eight inches. And once I have done that, I am going to start playing with how is this going to look. Now, I will cut the words separately from that background. However, I like to play with it like this so I can kind of get a feel for how it's going to look. I can also utilize that grid 
so that I can see, I know because my album is 12 inches wide, I know that as long as I am smaller than the mat shown here, that I am totally fine, everything will fit. So this is allowing me to kind of take a look at and fit in, where do I think I want these different pieces? Now, something that I kind of noticed is what if I took the 2021 and actually welded it together with the background design? Now, what that means is to weld it, it will eliminate any overlapping cuts. So the 2021 will kind of become a more subtle part of that background. And the way that you would do that, there's a lot of different options here, but the way that you would do this to get these to weld, you would select those two items, then in object edit, you click weld. Now you're gonna pause here and really look at it. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, what you can do is click cancel, and by clicking cancel, you are eliminating it. I can see the 2021 here, and I think it looks really, really cool. But let's say I want to resize. Well, what I can do is go in here and ungroup them. So I can unselect them. There we can, we can pick or unpick whatever we might like. And then I can go in and edit and change the size, change whatever I might like. So you're not trapped. If you try to weld something and it doesn't work or you don't like it, just hit cancel and you can go make your edits as I'm doing here. Then you can go back on, on in. You wanna select those two pieces again and weld them again and see how it looks. And if you like it or once you're satisfied with it, you're good to go. So once I have that done, I know that I'm saying okay to weld. Now we're ready to cut. It's really that simple. So I'm moving that piece up and I'm moving my Smith family photos. I'm going to move them across the bottom. But first, I'm going to change their sizes just a little bit. And just a tip, I'm noting the height. I want the Smith to be a little larger than the family photos. So I want family and photos to be the same height. That will give them an equal looking size. Versus the width. The width, because there's different amounts of letters, different size of letters, that's not as consistent. But I'm looking at this and making sure, do I like the size? I'm just double checking. Can't hurt to double check, right? So I'm just double checking, I like the size, I think I have a design that's going to work here. Okay, once we're satisfied with it, once we like it, then we can go ahead and place everything for cutting. So I am going to put, I have a small, about three inch high strip of black vinyl that I'll put across the bottom. And then up at the top, I will put a piece of eight inch by 12 inch vinyl white for the background. Once everything is great, once we're satisfied, now note that little blue button in the middle there, if you need to scan your mat to verify your material, you certainly can by pressing that button, super simple, one step. Otherwise, you're ready to cut and you want to make sure that our half cut is turned on so that it is only going to cut the vinyl, not the backing sheet, and then you let it cut. And this particular set of things is about eight minutes, a lot of cutting, but there you can see my two colors of vinyl. You can see it's getting going. It's so exciting. Love it. All right, now it's just time to assemble. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to cut my words. I can see where the words are and I'm going to cut them apart simply to make it easier on myself for both weeding and transferring. Weeding just refers to removing all of the material that you do not want to transfer. So I'm going to start by doing the outline here and just start at a corner and pull away all of the pieces slowly and gently because we don't want to tear anything. Slowly and gently just removing all of those pieces. Look how pretty that is. This machine can cut so small and so detailed. And then I'm going to take a little pick tool that's uh, set, available for purchase from Brother those great little pick tools, and I'm going to repeat on all of the pieces. Once everybody is weeded, once everybody is ready to go, I am ready to put this onto my project. So the first thing I'm going to do is take, make sure everything is good to go, and then take my transfer material, which is what you see here, the grid. So this will pick up my vinyl sticker and help me move it or transfer it onto whatever my project surface is. Now you're going to want to really press. Sometimes sometimes it takes a little more than others. 
I feel like it sometimes can depend. The transfer material can be used over and over again, but sometimes I feel like it, the newer it is, the quicker it picks up. And if it's been used a few times already, sometimes it's a little slower. But here you see, super easy. And yes, we're a little bit in fast, fast forward just because this can take, I, I really take my time here to look at it. I love that the transfer material is clear so we can see exactly where we're putting things down. I'm just using that little tiny cup to help me keep this flat since it's an album and it wants to kind of be in an angle because there's nothing in it yet. And then we just press. We just press all over until we feel pretty confident that everything has been pressed down and transferred and voila, here we go. It's going to just lift right off. Now, if you've noticed any bubbles or any spots that need to be fixed, you just press down. And that's what I'm doing here before you move on. You can just use a little tool, use your finger, whatever works. Press on down, make sure everything is nice and secure and onward. Now here is super fast forward for the Smith. We're going to repeat this for every piece. So for each word, we're just repeating. And I'm just showing you, there's different ways you can go about this. There's, you could do it right side up, upside down. You can play with what way, what method works for you best as far as getting everything transferred onto the transfer material and then placed. And I really, um, I take my time here and I'm really careful to really look at it and place it gently and carefully each time, making sure that it's where I want it to be and that I'm happy with it. I have to tell you, this project came out even cuter than I imagined. Using the white for a subtle decorative background really made me so happy. Originally, I had been thinking about different colored vinyls, but then I worried it was too much. So I really love how this just simple black and white customization adds so much to this album. Now we're on our final piece here, transferring the photos. And can you see my 2021 there kind of hidden? I'm gonna put photos so it just overlaps just a slight bit there with 2021. This is just such a fun way to customize a simple project or a gift. This would be a wonderful gift for someone else. And there it is. Now the only thing left is there's a spot right there that I just feel like I wish there was a tiny pop of color. I could go and create something or I have little paper flowers that should hold up really well to being on an album cover. So I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive to this one and glue it right there. Just as a fun finishing touch and a bit of color. You could add a lot of different things. It could be a button, it could be some sequins, some rhinestones. I mean, there's all kinds of fun things that you could add as well. And then let this dry and it's good to go and ready to fill with a one.